Good morning everybody and welcome to my project today. I have chosen this project today because I actually wanted to do it. So I have embroidered and made my very own earring holder. Uh, so it's a very quick, simple project. Obviously the simpler the design, the quicker it is for you. Uh, but all you really need is some tulle, an embroidery machine, a hand embroidery hoop, and some wash away stabilizer. So if you would like to see how I have done this project, please stay tuned. So things you'll need for this project are some tulle mesh. Um, I've picked like a pale green just because I'm green obsessed. Um, I bought half a metre, uh, but I'll show you how I cut that in a second. You're going to need, obviously, your embroidery hoop. Now, think about your design with this, because you don't want it to take up the entire space, then there's no room for your earrings. So I've picked a design that's 5 by 7 uh, so even the hoop, it won't take up all the space, but it'll be like a nice chunk in the centre. Uh, I've got some scissors. Those are my class A knife edge for those that are interested. And then I've got this stuff. So this is a plastic based wash away stabilizer. So we're going to need two pieces of this because uh, we're going to put one on the bottom and one on the top. So I'm just going to cut, I'm going to lay the hoops on top and I'm just going to cut it a little bit bigger like that. Uh, you can buy this stuff by the roll from Echidna or I think you can get it by the meter from Spotlight as well. Uh, but if you plan on doing a lot of towels or a lot of these, you're going to want to get the roll because it works out way cheaper. Okay, so the way I cut this piece was I literally just laid the hoop on top and made sure I had heaps of excess everywhere. And I know this may seem wasteful, but otherwise I have to like perfectly line up the center which is not always easy to do, especially on something soft and flimsy like this. So I'm going to take one of these pieces. I am then going to lay this approximately in the center, like so. Then I'm going to grab my second piece and make a sandwich. Now the reason we're using two pieces of this uh, wash away is because these holes are quite large and we want our um, design to sit well in the center. So then I'm going to take my hoop, and my hoop has an arrow for which side should point up. So we're going to put that in the center as well. And then grab my hoop. Now I am going to shuffle all of this over. I like to sit it approximately next to it. And then I'm going to kind of roll this over. And I like to grab it opposite corners so I can pick it up. And then pop it in the hoop. Now you want it to be firm, but not so firm that you're going to damage your fabric. So I need to make this a little bit looser. You should be able to push it in, but you shouldn't have to overly force it. So that's still really tight. You know why? Because I didn't actually change anything. This hoop is actually broken, so it used to have a little thing I could twist easier. Okay. So that is now in the hoop. Um, you should almost be able to play it like a drum. So you want it to be firm, but you don't want to stretch it. This stuff is a little bit stretchy. Uh, so you want to try not to stretch it when you're pushing it in the hoop. Um, another thing I want to say is you do want to pick a more dense design. You don't want a lot of line work because once we wash away the stabilizer, the stitches would droop. Whereas because I'm going to do um, like more of a satin stitch and a fill, this will work out much, much better. So now we're ready to go over to the machine. I've loaded the design in. Uh, now, I, this is an Urban Threads design, but I'm not a big fan of gold, so I'm changing all the goldy parts to green because I'm green obsessed and it's fine. I've also slowed down my speed, stitch speed, because I really don't want anything damaged. And you also want to make sure that everything is out from under the hoop because it would be quite easy for things to get stuck. So then I'm just going to run like a little bit to show you and then I will show you what to do at the end. Uh, 
I'm going to stop it there uh, and show you what's going on. So I can see a little bit of the white of the understitching. So what I'm actually going to want to do for this is make a matching bobbin for each of them. Uh, because if you can see, you probably can't see because of the lighting, but the white is slightly showing through and I don't want that. So I'm going to wind a bobbin of each colour and then I will stitch it. So the design has finished stitching, so now I'm just going to pop it out of the hoop like that and pop the hoop aside. Now with this stuff, for the most part, you should just be able to tear it away from the design. That's why I love the plastic waterproof, uh, water wash away. Uh, but we haven't got all of it, so I have gone and got a bowl of warm water, as warm water works best for removing the excess. I've also got a towel to pat it dry a little bit, but I am going to try and pull out as much of this as I can. So you should just be able to kind of put your finger under it and just tear it off because where it's stitched, it's actually perforated it like heaps. Uh, I can't get out the eyes. So that is what we've got so far. But as you can see, I've still got, like, in these little sections, I've still got a little bit of the waterproof, uh, the wash away stabilizer. So I'm literally just going to put it in a bowl of warm water. Now, warm water dissolves the glue or the wash away stabilizer quicker than cold. Um, so it's actually almost done. And what you'll find is when you touch it, it'll feel almost kind of gummy-ish. And a little bit sticky, but not too much, right? So I think I've got it all, and you can't. I'm kind of just scratching at it so it goes away. But I'm fairly confident that that's all done, so I can just pop the water aside. I've got a a towel, and yes, my towels are green too. And I'm just kind of fold it over and just kind of pat most of the water out. Now. You don't want it to completely dry just sitting, so I'm actually going to hoop it and let it dry in the hoop. And what that's going to do is make sure that everything dries in the same space. If you were doing an, a bowl, for example, you would drape this over the bowl so that it dries in the shape that you want. So that is still wet, it's just not dripping wet. So I'm going to take out my old one. So all you have to do for this is just loosen off this top little screw. So you can buy these at like Spotlight. They're just um, hand embroidery hoops. So that's my old one. That's just a little bit of blue tack because I used to blue tack it to the wall uh, before I got hubby to put in an actual nail. So this one goes inside this one. Therefore, you want to put this in the center. Now, my board's going to come in handy so that I can kind of center the design, but I don't have to. I could actually put it down the bottom and have all the earrings hanging from above, or I could put it over to the, well, I can't put that side, but I could move it to the top and have all the earrings hang underneath. But I, I have a thing for the middle. I like middles. So that's approximately the middle. So then I'm just going to take this hoop and making sure that where the joint is, which is also my tie, which is just a piece of cord, you want it to sit at the top as well. And then we're just going to start, I'm not pulling it, but I kind of am. I'm going to make this very, very taut. I don't want it to be too stretched, but I also don't want any kind of pulls in it. So right here, I can see that it's got a little bit of a wave. So before I tighten it up, I'm just going to push on this design to make it a little bit flatter. And then I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Not the whole way, but just enough so that the hoop holds a little bit better. And then I can kind of, I am going to slightly pull, but only to remove the wrinkles that I can see. So I'm just going to, so there's a wrinkle here that's going this way. So I'm going to pull here and then a little bit here 
to straighten that wrinkle out. Now I'm not trying to overstretch it. So this does, as you can see, takes a little bit of maneuvering like that. And then I'm just going to tighten it up some more. All right. Now I still need to do some more tightening because in this, in the bottom of the hoop here, see how it's not flush? There's like a little gap. Just means it's not yet tight enough. It is almost the entire way shut though. So after a point, you just run out of extra space to tighten it any further. Okay. So now I'm just gonna flip it over and grab some scissors. And I'm just going to cut the net just off. So I'm kind of using the edge, the outer edge to, as my guide for cutting off the excess net. You don't want to cut it totally 100% flush with that. Because then it's more likely to slip and fall out. So I'm just doing it on a bit of an angle so there's going to be a little bit sticking out, but it's on the back and you're not going to see it. Now to speed up the drying process, if you want to, you could just get a hairdryer, uh, but I'm quite happy for it to just stay like that. So then you can just start hanging your earrings through the holes like that. And you now have a very cool one of a kind earring holder. So I'm going to put the rest of those on and then I am off to finish writing out the pattern for the beach bag so it can go to the testers by the end of today. All right, guys.